Good evening, everybody. The hall is full. That shows the about the speaker today. The MBA Academy, in collaboration with the Tamil Nadu Senior for Senior Advocates Forum, in the lecture series, we got uh, Justice N. Sadish Kumar on the topic and overview of criminal trials. On 21st May 2020, in the same MBA Law Academy, in the webinar series. His lordship spoke about section 52 and 53 of the TP Act on 21st May 2020. It is in the. It is very much available in the YouTube. I went through the comments. One of the comments said, "Great judge, watching his court itself is like uh, attending a class, and one can learn civil law thoroughly." And another comment says, after a long time, a wonderful and useful lecture on NTP Act. I think after this uh, uh, speak, you will have more. We expect more comment on uh, the series. Now, uh, with this small introduction, I uh, pass on the mic to Justice Sandish Kumar. Good evening. <coughs> See, this is not a lecture. Just I wanted to share my experience as a trial lawyer and as well as a trial judge with regard to the criminal trial. Senior counsels are present here. I did not uh, harp upon much on the trials. See, fundamentally, what is a criminal trial? When the trial commences, as far as the criminal case is concerned. If anybody has an idea, yes, correct. As far as the criminal case is concerned, the trial commences the moment charges are framed against the accused. The trial is what is a trial? is a determining the issues, adjudging the guilt or innocent of the, the accused charge for the, the particular crime. Just, just like a, the fact in issue, fact in issue is that the charge against the particular accused. Similarly, like uh, issues in the criminal civil cases is that of uh, charges. So determination, adjudication based on the evidence available before the court, the court will not determine or decide the issue merely on the basis of the evidence alone. Only you will have to think, only on the basis of the evidence, the fact in issue cannot be decided. You all know section 3 of the Evidence Act, the word proved. The court, after considering the matters before it, the word evidence is totally conspicuously absent. The legislation is restricted not only is not to the evidence alone. It's given a wide scope, the matters. The matters is a the wide connotation and it's extended beyond various aspects. For take for example, admissions, presumptions. Everything has to be, inferences, has to be taken out of the courts. So ultimately, the trial commences, as I said, from the framing of charges. When it trial is over, normally they will all say that trial will be over the moment the judgment of conviction is passed. Not so. When the court finds the guilty of the person, till the sentence is awarded, trial is deemed to be pending. 
Awarding the sentence is also a different aspect. The various factors to be taken note of by the courts. So before understanding the trial, one must know the, the procedure law. And what is the investigation? Investigation is all the proceedings conducted under the code. Code in the sense, code, now the new code will come. Suraksha. Naya Suraksha. Suraksha. You will call it as Suraksha very easily. Yeah. Mm. So, whatever the investigation conducted under the code, what, what is the purpose for the investigation? For collection of the evidence in a criminal trial. So, now, to conduct the proper trial as a lawyer, the ultimately you will have to see that justice is rendered, the guilt should be punished or innocent should be acquitted or discharged. Then investigation commences from where the moment the information is given to the police with regard to the commission of offence, the law was set in motion, law is like is set in motion. Then you should understand what is the first information note, what is the basis for uh, recording such information. How far that information is reliable and how far this information is useful in a criminal trial. Unless you have an, a basic idea of a first information report and what are all the purposes it could be used, you can't move with the trial. As a trial lawyer, you cannot be a successful lawyer. First, you should have an idea about an FIR. What is an FIR? FIR is a former statement of the person's witness. What is this evidentiary value? Whether all the contents in the FIA could be taken as an evidence, mere filing of a document alone, you have to understand. So, unless the factual aspects found in the FIA spoken by the witness, statements contained in the FIA cannot be taken as evidence. You should know that first fundamental of the FIA. And FIA could be used only for contradictions as well as corroboration. What is the contradictions? What is the corroboration? You will have to know the difference between the contradiction and the corroboration. How to elicit the contradictions? Generally, now nowadays, I have seen many cases. They will just compare the statements, the contradictions, the difference, inconsistent statement found in FIA and 161 statement, they will compare, they will show it to the court. This is the variance in the two statements. The court should not rely upon the FIA. This is the method of uh, eliciting the contradictions. Have any, any of you, young lawyers, I am asking, how do you elicit the contradiction in the FIR or in the statements? I have no idea about it. So, you can't compare the two pairs unless the contradiction is brought as an evidence, brought on record. The court cannot look into the document. The reason is that statement recorded under section 161 cannot be used for any other purpose except when used by the prosecution, the accused can contradict the witness. So, 161 statement can be used only for contradictions. But whereas the FIR, former statement, could be used used for corroboration also. So, you should know the, the difference between the contradictions, mm -hmm. corroborations. Then only you can ask a proper relevant questions during the examination in the trial. So, as far as the trial is concerned, you know that there are three or four ty types of trials. Sessions trial, section two, 225 to 237. These are all sessions cases, trial by the sessions courts. Then warrant cases, trial by warrant cases, 238, 243, 248 and 249. Then summons cases, then summary trials. These are all only procedure. 
how the sessions cases to be dealt by the sessions court warrant cases to be dealt by the magistrates summary trials by the magistrates summons cases this is only the procedure aspect but ultimately unless you know the the importance of the nuances of the the relevancy of facts relevancy of facts you cannot be a successful tri trial lawyer for take for example the investigation law in set in motion under section 154 of crpc so you must thoroughly you should have an idea about what is 154 so once the law was set in motion then what is the next stage investigation commences how the investigation commences take for example if any murder take place <coughs> what will the immediate immediate action of the investigation officer they go to the place they visit the places they find or they seize the make a seizure of material objects what are the items scattered in the scene of occurrence they'll seize the investigation officer is seize that material objects then you should know what is the relevancy how this documents are relevant under the evidence act what will be the evidentiary value of this document seized by the investigation officer for take example the moment he visit the scene of occurrence the murder place the investigation officer we have to prepare observation magazine or rough sketch this is called a rough sketch so you have to, you should know what is the evidentiary value of this rough sketch and observation magazine once you are able to show that these document is not come under the category of direct evidence you can straight away question the document being admitted if you are able to show that this document fall under the category of hearsay evidence you can straight away make an objections and those document cannot be looked into by the courts then how you distinguish how this document will be a direct evidence or hearsay evidence when there is an evidence that in investigation officer himself gone to the spot and make his personal inspection observe personally directly himself observe and make a note of the place and prepare a scene of i mean this is a topo sketch and make a seizure that will fall under the category of direct evidence suppose he gives an evidence i went there by the time everything has been removed but someone witness was present here you are told that these are all the items were present there based on a statement as recorded this then it will fall under the category of hearsay evidence so those document cannot be admissible in evidence so you should know that uh, difference between what is a direct evidence then hearsay evidence then how this uh, observation magazine rough sketch and other seizure affected by the investigation officer is relevant under the evidence act so evidence act is a codified only the facts which are declared to be relevant alone are admissible and no others section 5 is couched in negative language only the facts which are declared to be relevant under the evidence act alone is admissible in evidence and no others so any other evidence is not permissible under law but as we said that what is the oral evidence direct evidence you are under the impression that whatever you give evidence is an evidence direct evidence this is not so only the wherever the court permits the party to give a statement to the certain aspects below come under the direct evidence is not every evidence so similarly all the documents only when is declared to be when they relevant under the evidence act it's admissible in evidence so you should know what is relevant how it's relevant to the the facts so take for example section 6 deals with the risk estate is a exception to the hearsay what is the exception you should know what is the exception to the hearsay rule only when the evidence in such a nature it is in the contemporaneous nature forming part of the same transaction then it is admissible in evidence there should not be any long interval between the occurrence or evidence 
then it is certainly it under the rule of ERC. For the ordinary the observation magazine and rough sketch, how it is relevant? How do you find, where do you find that it is relevant under the, is it relevant or not? You will have to go through the provision of law. Section 7 of the Evidence Act deals with the same provisions. You read the illustration of the section 7, you find wherever scratches, marks, blood marks, struggle mark found in the place of occurrence, <coughs> observed by the investigation is relevant under section 7. So, unless you know the relevancy of the documents, it is very difficult to conduct a trial, particularly in a criminal trial. Because it involves the life of the person. Nowadays, in my experience, most of the cases, the courts is not bother about the prosecution to conduct the cases. The most of the cases end in the conviction based on the questions asked by the defense. Sorry to say that. This is happening. I think uh, you all would have seen in the, uh, the appeals also. See, several uh, questions, irrelevant questions, they will fill the lacuna. Wherever the uh, prosecution left the, the evidence blank, they fill it. The irrelevant questions. First art of cross examination is that what question should not be asked. You have to learn which are the questions should not be asked. Simply every case, see, take for example. They will ask simple questions. There will not be any evidence with regard to the source of light. Source of light, there was no, the prosecution would have omitted a, the evidence. Prosecutor would not have asked any questions. But he would ask everything and get it filled. Defense lawyer. So, first thing you have to be with uh, thorough about the relevancy of facts. Then, then you should know, then what will happen to investigation. Suppose the test identification period is conducted. How and what circumstances test identification period is reliable and what is the evidence value of the test identification period and which provision of law the test identification period is relevant unless you have an idea about that provision. It is very difficult to put a question to the, very difficult to even uh, question that uh, the so called IT parade. You should be thorough about the law. Under which provision of law you say that uh, IT parade uh, is relevant? Have any any of the young, young lawyers, can you have any idea about it? Uh, section 9, exactly. So, in such a manner only you will have to know that. Section 9, IT parade when it is relevant, what is the evidentiary value, when it is it's a substantive piece of law, evidence, or it is only corroborative value. Before that, what is the difference between substantive evidence and corroboration? There must be a difference. What is the difference? What is the substantive evidence? Substantive evidence in the sense, simple, in a common sense, simple language, the evidence tendered before the court on oath is a substantive piece of evidence. This is the evidence. So, you should know about the procedure conducting the IT parade. What is the evidence to value of the IT? Then you can ask relevance questions. Suppose you take a difference of alibi. Burden is on you. When you assert that I was not in the particular place, burden cast on the accused under section 105. So, before taking such a plea, you should be very, very cautious. Once you take a plea of alibi, then you will have to prove that particular fact. Similarly, we forget about uh, general exceptions. Nobody will make any foundational facts to claim a general exception as provided under the Act, Section 84 to 100. Nobody's outright denial 
but they'll argue in uh, appeal stage may be converted what basis the court can convert just like that unless there must be some foundational facts preponderance of probabilities the way of class examination or even as some suggestion nobody will make it but now you claim as a matter of right you claim that you should be some leniency should be shown and what basis the court can show the leniency so unless you know when you claim any general exception the burden is on you accused similarly 106 the facts exclusive within the knowledge of the person you have to prove that certain facts it's not that everything is on the prosecution everything is not that the entire burden is on the prosecution certain facts is also on the accused suppose anything happens inside the house dwelling house where only the husband and wife are residing or husband and children are residing something happens to either husband or children who has to explain it unless it is explained properly by the accused there must be a presumption against him only so no don't leave that only everything has to be prosecution has to be proved so and similarly then all the material objects are collected normally they will send to the forensic department for comparison it may be either handwriting it may be the uh, fingerprints footprint i mean ballistic experts unless you know what is the uh, evidence reveal of the handwriting experts fingerprint evidence how do you how do you challenge that experts before the courts you should thoroughly you also be should be become a expert you read the you should assume the role of the experts you learn acquire certain knowledge about the those facts whether the handwriting experts opinion is conclusive proof why it cannot be a conclusive proof so many things there may be give so many reasons also because handwriting may differ even for hour to hour even each person to person cannot be a certain but whereas fingerprints is a unique identity it's a conclusive proof ballistic examiner you have to challenge the ball- there may be a cases you have to challenge the ballistic report also unless you have an idea about the ballistic experts who report and how they functioning how they conclude they come uh, given an opinion is very difficult to cross examination them now the dna dna is almost there to be a conclusive proof now nobody knows how the dna has been matching but once the report is there it's matched there is the matter very very difficult to dislodge that uh, dna report because only experts are performing it two uh, chromosomes two sides matching with each other there is the matter 99.9% uh, accuracy nobody no no difference at all as far as the dna is concerned so before challenging the, those witnesses we should know about the dna how the dna is matched what is the procedure they following it you should become as a expert in that field before becoming a lawyer before embarking any cross examination in that aspect we should read about the dna this all required for a good lawyer criminal trial in post mortem post mortem you will all just simply that you will all destroy the doctors you will ask all type of questions i have seen in my experience i have seen the questions where did you study what is bathra station whether he studied in the mmc or stanley what way is concerned about it next question will be no 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 because we didn't get a, a government seat that's what you have studied in a private college let it be and ultimately you will give a theory since you are not qualified to be a government doctor qualified to be a government doctor qualified to be study in a government court you are unfit to give an opinion this is a suggestion but ultimately his evidence will not be shaken 
So before that, what is the see expert postmortem doctor's evidence will serve the two purposes. Either is the evidence will be as an expert evidence as far as the cause of death, postmortem is concerned. But as far as the injuries is noted by him, it will be treated as a direct evidence on what is seen on the body of the dead body, dead body what he narrates before the court, it's a, only a direct evidence. Direct evidence, apart from that, his evidence also will come under the category of expert evidence. So, you'll have to know that difference also. Then, confession. Suppose FIR is also there. What is FIR? FIR, there may be circumstances also. Accused also may give a FIR which may lead to the filing of the cases. Suppose an FIR contained the confession, what will be the evidence revalue of that FIR? Whether still the FIR could be marked? Whether the, in, the, in the event the FIR has contained in, inculpatory statements, incriminating statement, incriminating the accused himself, whether such FIR could be marked, could be used against the accused? Then how do you say this FIR cannot be used? Before that, you should know which provision prohibits the admission, the so-called so confession is prohibited of the accused even before the police is prohibited. Total prohibition in section 25. And suppose the FIR contained the part of portion of the inculpatory statement and part of exculpatory statements. Then what will be the evidence revalue? FIR could still exculpatory statements could be used. So there are there is not that merely because it's given before the police is totally is made inadmissible. Still it could be used. Even before recording any evidence, commencing investigation is going to the police station or handing over any material objects. Though it appears to be like a confession, still it could be received in evidence relevant under Section 8 of the Evidence Act. So, unless you thoroughly read the Evidence Act, it is very, very difficult to be a criminal lawyer. This is my personal experience. Then, confession. Confession is totally given before uh, the prohibited when it is given before the police. Oh, no, only exception is 27. What is the 27? Everybody is under the impression, most of the, my, I, my experience as a trial judge, I have seen that. Irrespective of the senior, junior, everybody, everybody under the impression that there is no seizure, there is no material objects marked. Therefore, the entire uh, section 27 con confession is there uh, and inadmissible. But, I'll, I used to ask them, please go through the section 27. Section 27 does not indicate that material objects has to be seized. Any new facts which led to the discovery of fact, what is a fact which is not known to the police prior to the, his arrest, prior to his giving a statement, any new fact which led to the further investigation, it's admissible in evidence. Is there any uh, compulsion on the police to register an FIR to re record a, conf a confession at 27C? I can ask the uh, senior counsel. Huh? Sir, I didn't get the question. No, no. Is it mandatory to record the FIR to record uh, any confession under Section 27? A record to make any recovery? To start the law in motion, you require a complaint. Hmm. And thereafter, it is confession leading to a discovery of a thing or a fact. Mm. You know, so, so therefore, <laughs> in order to discover a fact or a thing, there need to be a confession. It could be an exceptional confession or a confession before the police. So, exceptional confession being a big piece of evidence, even that could be treated as a confession where some facts could be discovered. And there could be a police confession where 
uh, things can be recoverable. For example, if a person identifies a body. Suppose some, now we are all gathered here. Somebody has barge in this room. On seeing his conduct, somebody has just uh, called that uh, CSF. He got him and he found his uh, all explosives. Then immediately he caught him. Do you mean to say that the FIR should be registered? Then immediately he says that. Not only this, I also planted uh, some explosives in chief's room or the bar's room. <laughs> okay. eh? Do you expect that in such a scenario, the FIR to be registered where the police station should be go to the police station, formal FIR to be registered, then the recovery to be made. What will be the immediate reaction? Immediately we'll call the other police officers there, even the over wire, and uh, diffuse the explosives. So it can't be, in such a situation, you can't say that there should be an FIR. This evidence is also admissible later. But, sir, whether the code provides any contingency, I mean, any uh, law for these contingencies? 1961, 11 judges bench. Code doesn't go. 1961, 1961, 11 judges bench of uh, Supreme Court elaborately de dealt with this uh, uh, issue. Particularly 27. Yeah, no, 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 1961. 11 judges bench. So, discovery of fact. Discovery of fact is in any form. For example, even ordinary cases, one accused is arrested use the statement that no 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 other persons also involved then police further based on the statement proceeds further thereafter the statements say that i was concealed a theft article somewhere else i i pledge that a theft article somewhere else police recovers also that's also admissible it's not that recovery should be made from the particular person section 27 then you should also Section 30. 30 is only with regard to the joint, joint trial, confession, confession of the co accused. This may be, though it's not a substantive piece of evidence against other accused, but it may be taken into consideration, provided all other circumstances established. 1961 Supreme Court 1908. Yes, 11 judges. Yes. 27. Yes. 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 The evidence is apart. This is one part of evidence how the matters have been placed. And you should have a read, read at every section twice, or thrice before conducting the cases. You have to find out whether this evidence produced by the prosecution fall within the ambit of section, whether it will satisfy the ingredients of the particular section. There are many presumptions, statutory presumptions. Presumption of law and presumption of facts. Take for example, ordinary example for presumption of law is a 113B of a dowry death. Similarly, the now the, the POXO presumption applies. But before the statutory presumption applies, you should see that whether all the foundational facts have been proved by the prosecution. <laughs> Unless the foundational facts is established on record, presumption cannot be applied automatically, though it's a statutory presumption. What are the foundational facts in a dowry death? Marriage, unnatural death, seven years. Soon before, it should be shown that soon before a death, she was subjected to cruelty or harassment in connection with the dowry. Death is unnatural. All these facts have been proved, foundational facts proved, then presumption under section 113B will automatically apply. 
So these are all the facts. Similarly, 113A with regard to the suicide. So unless we read the law properly, we cannot be successful criminal lawyers at all. Hostile witness. Everybody will think they are hostile witness. Hostile witness, witness will become hostile. Witness become hostile. What is hostile? Merely because the witness has declared hostile and examined some certain things, we will forget about uh, cross-examining with regard to the important facts. Suppose the witness speaks about presence of the accused. Though you would have turned hostile in respect of the participation of the accused. But we think, oh, because he has not spoken anything about me. He has not implicated. He has not implicated the accused. No questions, simply. But ultimately, when it comes to the corroboration, this evidence stands there. His presence will be established. And in, in chain of other circumstances when taken together, there will be a piece of evidence. Some would have implicated him for causing murder also. When uh, some presence is established by this witness, this is also evidence against him. So, we will omit to cross-examine these witnesses also. So, so this is all the basic uh, things in a criminal trial. We will totally omit the questions. Or we start cross-examination, we will all ask only irrelevant questions. Relevancy will forget it. Relevancy totally forget it. So before that, what is relevance here? We have to read. It's not uh, the rocket science. Section 6 to 55 under the evidence act only, these are all the relevant facts. How these facts are connected to each other, we have to see that. Only, it's not a uh, rocket science, it's only common sense. Even judge over it may be lawyer. We have to apply our common sense. Prudence. Evidence Act says only prudence. You will have to apply that. But you are not doing it. But ultimately, justice will be a casualty. As I said, exception, general exception, nobody is questioning. As far as a general exception, except I have seen a lawyer. Virudachalam Redyar, he will straight away accept. This is my case. I will argue for this only. He will openly, boldly argue. He will admit the questions also put a questions. We will argue and get an exception and say that the matter comes under the 304 part, part 2. Now we totally deny it. Occurrence will totally deny it. Ultimately, the prosecution will be successful in proving the guilt. Then the appeal stage will all come and plead. Leniency may be shown, my lord. Leniency may, under which provision leniency could be shown. This is the big problem in a criminal trial. No, no, you can take it. At least some probabilities you can be brought on record. Suppose you want to take any exception, some probabilities. Burden is not as that of the prosecution. Simultaneously, you can also take it. That is all well settled now. So now, the discharge. When the discharge, normally the last. Once the charge is framed, where is the question of asking discharge? They will file a number of petitions for discharging the accused. What is required for framing the uh, charge? Even prima facie suspicion is enough to frame a charges against the accused. So once the charge is framed, where is the question of discharging the accused? So Sessions Court, after taking in evidence, it finds that there is no evidence available against accused. Straight away can order acquittal without 330 question. Once the find, court finds that there are materials, then you ask the defense to enter is a defense. Thereafter, it comes under the judgment of acquittal. The acquittal and judgment of acquittal, there is a lot of difference in Sessions cases. And 227, the discharge. All cases the discharge will ask. What is the point in that? Then 
other aspect 319 now the constitution bench has settled issue ardip singh case even the chief examination any evidence by way of chief examination brought on record implicating some other person who is not already arrayed as an accused he can be added as an accused so once a person is added and accused under section 319 he cannot file any discharge application discharge is not at all permissible for the persons who have been added under 319 of crpc this is the judgment of uh, constitution bench ardip singh ardip singh was state of uh, punjab 2014 3 supreme court cases 92 similarly the, the difference of class examination the scope now the supreme court has severely condemned they gone to the extent of in several matters and the concept of fair trial cannot be stretched for extending the time for delaying the time for deferring the class examination indefinitely this is not the object of the fair trial fair trial includes the speedy justice also so when the trial class examination can be deferred under the provision under the, before this uh, session sport maximum the next witnesses before the next witness is examined the previous witnesses class exam can be deferred suppose pw1 was examined today this class examination could be deferred till the pw2 examined tomorrow or day after tomorrow no witnesses speak about same thing ఇన్సిడెంట్స్ suppose next month the trial they fixed today they will issue proceedings they will say that first day witness number 1 to 10 next day 11 to 20 they will issue proceedings the same day the exactly what the dates are they fixed the witnesses have been brought all the witnesses will be produced first day 10 witness and 10 witness will be present in the court sessions court all the 10 witness will be examined there won't be any adjournment at all the next day all the official witness will be examined fourth day the questioning but now sir earlier days chennai it's never happened should not have happened sir now chennai it was the system it used to sir i'm not it was the system but now even the professional courts were did not uh, able to get the witness but now after subsequent time the proceeding was issued but the traffic did not reach the richard hall i have practiced in case all trial cases jende in the district hai జుడిషియల్ <laughs> 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 Yeah, clearly, now, nowadays, there is no procedure. There should be, it should be strictly, it should be followed. But it was not followed. Yeah. What is the problem about that? It's like, the first piece of paper. Interesting. So, same day. Maximum. See, when I, when I was uh, conducting all the uh, huge uh, ma- murder cases, big matters, Navapatnam, Tanjavu, you know that 10 accused, 11 accused, charges will be around 20. Yeah, still. See, <laughs> we will maximum will try to conduct the cases in two days what over the number of accused we'll see that 60 witnesses na 60 witnesses will use to conduct 
if the witness has not been brought on the particular day, I used to pass an order imposing 25,000 rupees cost on the investigation officer under section 309. 309. Ad for adjourning the case, for next day, I will impose the cost on the station house officer and I also pass an order that it will be recovered as a cost under section 410 of the CRPC. So, automatically it will uh, enter in a service record. So, nobody will take the risk. Immediately they will produce the witness. So, it all depends upon the our uh, judicial officers. So, those, this was the trial. Even when I was uh, presiding the sessions courts, maximum week. Today, it commences a trial. Weekend, the judgment will be over. That was the practice throughout my career there. Mostly Tanjur and uh, Nagaputnam is a very sensational murder cases I have seen. Nagaputnam and Tanjur. The Tanjur gar gar. See, that was the idea of the trial. Then, I already said how to elicit the contradictions. The contradictions elicit under the name They will compare with the statements. They will even, I have seen in the High Court arguing the matters like comparing this matter. This is the contradiction, 161 statement like this matter. Witness says like this. This is not a contradiction at all. Contradiction should be brought to the notice of the, the particular witness. Attention of the witness should be drawn to the, the inconsistent statement. Then that portion of the inconsistency has to be recorded in the deposition. Then and then only the, the contradiction can be relayed upon by the court. Then how do you prove the contradictions? Suppose that you ask certain questions to the witness. See, you are stated like this before the investigation officer. In your 161 state, statement, you have stated that three people have attacked you. Correct? Then witness has to say that, yes, I, I stated. Then contradiction is proved. That evidence has to be recorded in the deposition. Then it can be said that a contradiction has been proved. In the event, the witnesses doesn't accept it. You deny it. Then you will have to go ask the same question to the I.O. You have recorded a statement. You have stated that three witnesses... Yeah, three people have attacked him. Then I was says, yes, yes, I have recorded, he has stated before me. Then contradiction is proved. So you will have to prove the contradiction in such a manner in the while recording the evidence. Unless those contradictions are brought on record, you can't rely upon, you can't argue on the contradictions. That is a fundamental. 160, as far as the 161 is concerned. But 161. There is a total bar for relaying the statements, except in two uh, conditions. Dying declaration and also recovery under section 27. So even a statement recorded under 161 with regard to the cause of death, in the event of the accused, I mean, the victim dies or witness dies later, that statement recorded under 161 is admissible as a dying declaration. This is the exception. Similarly, any material objects or discovery of fact made on the basis of the statement under section 161, this is also reliable, admissible under section 27. The two exception is there, 161. 161 could be used, statements could be used only for contradiction. 154, not only contradictions, but also Corroboration. What is the corroboration during investigation? What is the object of the in inquest? What is the mean by the inquest? Inquest, object of the inquest is only to find out the cause of death. What is the difference between inquest by the investigation officer, inquest by the RDO in respect of the death and unnatural death of the human? Then what is the inquest? What is the evidence level of the inquest under the custodial death? So you will have to read 173, 174 Eva, 
176 amendment la thoroughly read the provision of law this is this is the way of uh, approaching the criminal trial then burden of proof now accused has a right of silence you can even may not answer anything after incriminating evidence is put against him now law has been evolved when any incriminating evidence is not not answered no explanation is given under section 313 it also can be taken as an additional link as against accused taking out all other circumstances this non explanation also taken as one of the link as against accused so this is a law changed evolved another mere right of silence constitutional right don't take a chance so you should give an explanation for every incriminating evidence though you have a right of silence so take for example can you say that i have a right under the constitution i will not explain anything suppose that the issue is that in the same bedroom one of the spouses found murder other spouses found uh, is also inside when when they were together then who has to give explanation what has transpired inside the house who is the best person so unless he explains he can give us various explanation he can give yes i was there together but fight five over 5 minutes or 10 minutes i went to the washroom i when i returned i saw that you can give explanation plausible explanation but suppose you don't give any explanation what will be the presumption say inferences so these are all the things so we should be very very careful on that then so uh, this all law dictates that presumption should be drawn against the accused 106 facts exclusive within the knowledge of person the burden lies on him suppose you say that no 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 i never intended to murder him but i exercise my right of private defense then particular fact you let establish it for that you need not prove the fact as required by the prosecution but you have to create some preponderance of probabilities some suggestion some probabilities to believe his theory where your expertise required in the cross examination your expertise is required in the cross examination so straight away you denying the occurrence you project the case as if you are no way connected with the accused I mean the deceased whatever then you plead a exception here this is also very difficult so this is the uh, basic idea of criminal trial and uh, if any other interaction i am very happy to answer with any doubts because i have not prepared any lecture <laughs> this is all my my experience i am I just i am interacting with you <laughs> So that's the accused going to the box, sir. It's not like that. It's not that. It's all. You see, though the uh, language is couched as as if the accused has to uh, revert the presumption. For take for example, this uh, uh, Poxo, twenty nine, and the NDPS. Unless the foundational facts has to be established by the prosecution, even to apply any other exception, whatever it may be, foundational facts. has to be proved by the prosecution then law declares that the court shall presume certain facts against the accused so park so the foundational facts what is that aggravated sexual assault age minor aggravating sexual assault a sexual assault or aggravating sexual assault has to be established how do you establish there must be an evidence A, a, a evidence reliable probabilities everything is there see some foundational facts are established 
दाखिल से सुशो ये सो रिबर्ट तो बदल चुके दर्शन हमारा ना प्रूफ दर्शन बार ना प्रूफ इन इंडिया इंडिया इस बार इकोनॉमिक स्थिति और ये जो शेष नहीं बैक से प्राची क्वेश्चन बस पूर्ण रखिए बट इन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका द प्राची क्वेश्चन दर अक्टूबर से आज पूर्ण ही सीन है तंस दर लाइक इस इन द सम इतना तो फिर मत के प्राची क्वेश्चन पेड़ तू एग्जाम है आप पेड़ तू बहुत वन विकास से आज से इन सच ए सिचुएशन व्हाट व्हाट इज़ द रोल ऑफ़ द पुट ली से मेन आई विकास प्राची क्वेश्चन नॉट प so why for uh, skipping those uh, important bits of examine other witnesses what's the role of the court some section 12 of the amendment says the court can mm-hmm. ask the directly questions to the court, uh, accused and they ask the answers to the special witnesses that they ask see present system also court can ask so many questions section 165 of evidence act the court can uh, ask any questions at any time you need not wait that and based on that evidence also court can even add the new accused are the new accused 319 is power is there so merely because the witnesses the police witness turn hostile that is not in our hands at the most he can be prosecuted for giving a false evidence 164 suppose the statement is recorded under section 164 then that evidence will have some little value for prosecuting him but merely because his, his statement is recorded under section 164 of crpc the statement will not acquire the character of evidence acquire the character of evidence only exception is that poxo act or any person is uh, immobilized become in infirmity their statements are recorded due to the crime their statement could be treated as in uh, chief examination in lieu of the statement recorded under section 164 could be treated as a chief examination there are exception in the new amendments consistent statement recorded before the police officer once it for before the judicial officer okay anyway the last day witness not making him as last day then given the prosecutor the defense say cannot examine that the witness since he has not been examined by the prosecution no no no. The must no 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 if the witness is not examined by the prosecution defense can uh, summon him as a defense witness if the witness is not been examined by the prosecution if the defense want to rely upon that evidence they can summon that witness on their side evidence provided they should not have been examined on the side of the prosecution but once the witnesses are examined as the prosecution said those witnesses cannot be called as a defense witness once the witnesses already examined through uh, on the prosecution side you cannot call them as a defense witness once again so we are putting this in case bani bhushan singha was cbi Acquitted an accused person who is an under-trained person for 30 years. So, why the trial takes longer, longer time? Which court? Alagabata. Huh? Nangadang kekono. Both, both same. Yeah. Ibrizna of the other. See, I think in my my experience, I am telling. recently now only few years only now we have some 1000 cases i think life life appeal are pending for 3 4 4 years back tamil nadu madras high court was nil then and there the present case has been disposed of manner of disposal was such a wonderful each judges each bench will dispose more than 5 or 6 criminal appeals Six. No, no. Even when I was sitting with the CTS, I used to dispose it up. So very, very minimal. Our high court is doing wonderful job. Disposal. This is all uh, fair trial. Thirty years jail. Uh, Under trial prisoner. Twenty years. This all comes only either from uh, Uttar Pradesh 
or from uh, some other place. Not uh, certainly not from Madras <laughs> or Tamil Nadu. By the time they would have uh, got, they completed their sentence here, 14 years they would have all got a remission and gone back here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Interesting to some like you know, later judgment something there is a direction that you put in that it has been no, witness tutoring in the sense, the having interview with the witness the, by the prosecution before the trial cannot be found fault. They can give a refreshing to refresh the facts. It's always you can't say that it's all tutoring. Even for investigation officer, they're entitled to go through the papers. They can refresh a memory. And at uh, 138, 139, 140, yeah, the Evidence Act. They can refresh memory by referring the documents. So, witnesses were called by, by, for giving an evidence after four years, five years. What is the, uh, they can, they have a right to refresh their memory, what their statement is recorded. Those things cannot be called as a tutoring always. Pardon? Suddenly, without subjecting to pass examination, the expert. Yes. What is the value of the evidence for evaluating the Before cross examination, he dies, and no, it cannot be relayed presently. Is there any specific? You can't, uh, you can't rely upon that's it's all. You can't rely upon it. So, the opportunity, so that's what one thing, that's what I say that very, very, you should be very careful. And uh, Supreme Court, uh, this uh, Vinod Kumar case, you must be aware. This I will give you the judgment. See, in fact, we have held one case, Division Bench, I was, I was author of the judgment. He never uh, cross exam witness, accused. The witnesses are all his family members. He would have committed brutal murder. This reported judgment only. Palni was a state. Uh. See, we held when a person has given a several opportunities and he has not availed that opportunity to cross exam the witness, he has no right to contend that there was a no fair trial at all. I see. The cross examination wrote defer petition filed thereafter adjourned. You during that such sort of circumstances, if the defer petition is allowed by the court and the inter integrum period has died, yes, that evidence is very difficult to rely upon that evidence. That evidence is very difficult. But at the same time, now despite the despite the several opportunities are given, they are not availing the opportunity to cross exam witness. Now they can't complain that there is a violation of the fair trial procedure. No opportunity is given. Even if even if it's not class exam, the class exam is not part of the next exam. That cannot be asked by the. Yeah. See, this is all this uh, state uh, Palni Valley is a state we are referred. I think we have referred that there are three or four Supreme Court judges in this aspect. Uh, very clearly the held. By the way, once uh, once the the person. Accused to fail to avail the opportunities cannot comply the fair trial violation of fair trial procedure. It is the latest position developed. Another one, the class panel, you guys model are even going over line like yes, yes, no opportunity that will not work it out now. Article saying about establishing the contradiction by class examination. Con contradiction has to be brought on only in class examination. Of course. The witness gets, uh, and then she's able to give a comfortable answer and explanation for what happens. No, no, contradictions then can be. No, 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 contradictions can be elicited from the available record from 161 statement. See, witnesses, chief examination, uh, cross examination is totally different. It's inconsistency. 
inconsistent. The contradiction has to be established from the recorded statement, recorded statements recorded by the investigation officer during investigation under section 161. First, suppose, suppose the ordinary example in chief, the 161 statements before the IO, he states that so and so, five people came to my house, they attacked me. This is the statement before the investigation officer. But in chief examination, he says, nine people come to my house and attack me. Then there is a contradiction with regard to the persons, number of persons. 161 statements, five persons is stated, chief examination, nine person is stated. Then how to elicit that contradictions? So you will have to ask this first question. You have been examined by the police, whether you are given a statements before the police as follows, that nine people or five people are attacked you in a house. This is correct. Na? Yes, na, so na, na. contradiction is proved. That, that portion has to be recorded in the evidence at the time of recording evidence. So contradiction is proved. Suppose in the event he denies that statement, he will say, he will say, Nabagamale, I do not know, I don't remember. Then contradiction has to be proved for the purpose of your argument to show that the witness is unreliable, to test his veracity. So you will have to you will have to bring this statement to the IO later. Then IO is says yes, this is a statement he has given before me, then contradiction is proved. Then during argument, you can, for reliability question, you can show the court that he is unworthy. Witness is unworthy, he cannot be relied upon. And only that purpose, only the cross-examination, scheme of the cross-examination. Other than contradictions. Other than contradictions. Other contradictions. Discharge petition is pending. Other dispose panama charges are pending. Suppose strong evidence is written. Summa, purpose of delay, discharge petition is not going to be Charges frail, but suppose discharge petition is dismissed. Can we file a revision against that? You can't file a revision against that. 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 You can't a yeah, 90, 90, 90 years, ah, 82 years, 83, 5, 5 years, ala, or a sports shoe port guare, or either port guare, the end of court nursery, boy or patten, or half an hour, or an alke, nalen, al nalen, kelina, or forty minutes, la, or trial of music poiter. I never seen him filing any discharge petition in his life. You will just come and say that this is the case, this is the facts. You know, you may kekam for a real life, you know, you are a real liar and rang, eh? Or a Kelly Kekliana argument la barring a place panana, correct our case one and the exception on the Niki. Angia on the wine perver, three years wine perver, life. Be. So that was the way where they actually after the argument. Abu Dhabi on the Suma discharge, discharge, discharge report. What is the purpose ultimately? Sir, yeah, la me presumption da. Namma on the yes ma. But it has to be improved lot. Witness protection has to be given. Though there are uh, certain schemes, but still it should be brought as a uh, enforced enforcement uh, enforced law. There must be a proper treatment also. That is very difficult now. A narrative any person would add to because the lordship was saying when a crime is committed at that particular moment, 
and the person who is present in the place of crime might tell the police officer or investigation officer about what he thought. Probably a major portion of that could also be from an immediate trauma where he might not be able to assess the situation correctly or know the intensity and what exactly happened. Later on, if he thinks about it and gives a narrative to it when he keeps talking about it. So how can the prosecution or the defense arrive at the correct uh, correctness of the incident that has actually happened and uh, leave out the narrative that the witness could be adding? So you can give a statement to the investigation officer. Suppose you have been examined today, you could not give a, a accurate details. Even after you come to the conscious level, you can go to the investigation officer, you can give a further statement also. So ultimately, it's all based on various other factors. There is no bar under law to give a statements. And now, now mostly everywhere CCTV. So that cannot be challenged now. Provided the police people they produce that properly, nobody can escape now. Scientific evidence, very, very difficult to get over. Very, very difficult to get over. And uh, CCTV is the best evidence now. Silent witness. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> this is only to prevent the witness from treating us. I've been going uh, to, to, to create some fear psychosis so that he will come up with a true version, support the prosecution. Even otherwise, you will face the uh, prosecution for false evidence on the work purpose now. Hmm. <laughs> Doubts, benefit of doubts, raise for you, Athene may consider for not the applet for the valor. அது என்னென்ன டவுட்ஸ் வந்து நீங்க இதுல சுரக்ஷாக்கு வருவோம் அதாவது சிஆர்பிசில ஒரே ஒரு இப்ப புதுசா வர்றதுல இந்த பிரைவேட் கம்ப்ளைண்ட் சாதாரணமா யாரும் போட முடியாது to private complaint like cognizance yes, please do. Please do. without uh, giving an opportunity to the accused the court cannot take a cognizance hmm. that's what I recall 343 or 243 new act you have a private complaint you have to take a cognizance you have to take a cognizance the court cannot take cognizance that is the, the wording of this section happening on the cases. How far does it impinge on your functioning or as such on the... You should not give importance to that, sir. You are right. But really, it is causing so much of... No, no. They really, they tend to cause... No, no. They tend to cause so much of uh, this thing, uh, pressure. But we should ignore it. But we can ignore. But uh, judges in the level of district judiciary and other things, so there will be pressure, the pressure will be mounted on them.
because they are also human being see even uh, when i was uh, dealing with one matter in 482 that uh, some school matter the some suicide matter every day they are conducting a trial only yes. and commenting about the court that's all that's all proceeding halfway one statement just one line off the cuff so much of so much so much of uh, uh, <laughs> trial they conducted in the media Sir, sir, we had a webinar series in 2020, uh, TP Act, 52 and 53 of the Act, we, when uh, you were the President and I was Secretary. Okay. Uh, now the question answer uh, session over. The next remaining is fees collection uh, session. <laughs> what is this? Huh? It is a question and answer session for the juniors, and every senior wants to ask any question. <laughs> Tomorrow, if any, anybody comes to before lordship, don't give uh, any order. <laughs> now I request uh, A.R. Sundaris and senior counsel and uh, additional service center to put your shawl or just. Now I request uh, D. Srinivas and former secretary to give you a memento. Now a vote of thanks by secretary. Uh, to be honest, for the first time I'm witnessing, none of them have shown any restlessness till just this time. Normally, after 6 o'clock or 15, people will become restless, they wanted to go. But I will say, normally they use the word, it was good and it was very nice and all. I will use the apt word, it was enthralling. He just literally held us captive. He literally held us captive and even the seniors, as rightly the president has said, Every senior have just raised their own doubts and questions. So it is wonderful. Really, we thank you, Lordship, for having consulted and having given such a wonderful lecture. Hoping to have more such lectures in the future. And members, please make avail of this kind of a lectures and which will be very, very useful to you all. I also thank the seniors and uh, I thank uh, Mr. A.L. Somiyaji, convener, this Parthasardi co-convener and uh, Om Prakash, secretary, for organizing with us. And also the next um, uh, session will be on 16-4-2024, a mediation, a way forward, a way forward mediation. by Justice D. Bharat Chakravati. Please, all of you do attend Same on that day also. Time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir.